Welcome back to Sport on 7, exclusive on City 7 TV. I'm Tom Bushell, and you can find me on Twitter, should you fancy, at Tom Bushell UAE. Now, before the break, we spoke to both Alain and Al Ackley. Both are desperate for a win at the season opener Super Cup. The game was on Friday night and it was a close affair, ending goalless after 90 minutes before a penalty shootout decided the game. It was Al Ackley who came out on top. Afterwards, I spoke to the winning coach, Cosmin Ullaru. Uh, Cosman, just talk me through your first win, of course, with your new club, Club Al Ackley. Oh, first of all, we are happy that we win in the first game a trophy. But now we have to look forward for what is going to happen in the future. It's giving us a good push-up in front, but we have to look with modesty. This is most important, to keep our legs on the floor and the field, to understand that we win a fight, but not the war. Were you happy with the performance tonight? Uh, we are because they make a great effort in this weather. It's difficult to play, and uh, they make efforts, and they have to be congratulated for this. I saw you talking quite a few times to your former Alain players during the game. Can you tell me what kind of things you were chatting to them about on the touchline? Uh, no, we just say hello like this, but they are like my sons, and they will always be same. A happy man. Hugo Fiana, once Europe's most expensive teenager, signed for Al Akli over the summer and admitted his first game in the golf was not easy. It was difficult because we played against a very good team. Uh, personally, uh, it was difficult for me the first half because uh, the weather, the first game. But the second half, the team do a very good job. We control the game, so we deserve we deserve like the cup. Of course, settling into life in Dubai, how are you finding the city and, and the UAE as a whole to, as a place to live? Oh, very good place. The people are very friendly, uh, are very kindly. So I cannot ask for more. Of course, you were once Europe's most expensive teenager when you signed for. Newcastle yeah, United. Yeah, it was too many years ago. <laughs> but too many things happened after that. So <laughs> in terms of we cannot think about the past, just <laughs> the future. In terms of football here in the UAE, let's talk about the future. What do you hope to achieve here? Do you know how long you would want to stay in this country for? Oh, we have to work day by day, so we have to do everything for the club. We cannot think uh, the future, a large future, just day by day and work very hard. Asamoah Jan played his part for Alain, but spoke afterwards of his lack of that killer touch and his excitement for the rest of the season. Asamoah, uh, just uh, talk me through the uh, first game of the season for Alain. Talk me through how you felt that went. Yeah, it's just a great game. I don't, I don't think we did bad. We, we did so well. Um, we were unlucky with our finishing touches, you know, but, um, you know, it's, it's one of those things, you know. Last year we won the Super Cup, this year somebody else won, you know, so... Uh, what we have to do is we just have to keep our head up and then um, concentrate on the league now. Obviously, with your former manager now being out, do you feel that you're under more pressure to retain your title this season? Uh, yeah, I would say yes and no. You know, um, yes, because uh, um, every every team that plays against a line will come in very strongly, and um, no, because we we have um, quality players that are capable of winning the league once again. You know, so. I would say yes and no, but um, what we have to do is we have to keep on working hard and make sure winning, we win more, more games. Of course, great atmosphere here today as well. Uh, fantastic uh, for the night and uh, plenty more nights like that to come for Alain Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we know what our fans are capable of. You know, they come in their numbers to support their players. You know, we really appreciate that. You know, but at the end of the day, um, we played well, but at the end of the day, we lost. You know, football is, is sometimes it's this, this kind of things happens, you know. So um, what we have to do, we have to just keep our head up make sure we work hard and then um, start the, the, the season very good. Now Fabio Cannavaro, Italy's most capped player and a World Cup winner, is now assistant manager at Al Akali. After the game, he spoke of his love for the job and his passion for one day returning to Europe to manage. Of course, I want, uh, I want, to, I want to win something important. Yeah. Now this season is important to me, uh, with the, for me to learn a lot. But uh, next season uh, I want to try to be first coach. Uh, uh, of course, in the future I want uh, I want to win something important. With Italy in the World Cup? <laughs> no, I mean, of no, course. Which team you no. Think to, to be no, no, my national team, of course, with my national team, but uh, also in Europe, uh, everywhere. For me, it's important now to be to be coach. Uh, 
a here or in Europe. I don't know. No For me, team. it's the same. No specific team. No. no. <laughs> <laughs> Inshallah. Thank you. A great season ahead then for the Arabian Gulf League. Now, staying with football, ex-Real Madrid legend Michel Salgado is settling into life well in Dubai. Having been announced as the football director at Dubai Sports City earlier this year, the Spanish star has now launched his Spanish soccer school, hoping to help kids all across the country play football the Spanish way, which isn't that bad, is it? The first term will kick off on the 15th of September 2013 and you can register now at www.spanishsoccerschool.com. I spoke to the man that made 254 appearances for Real Madrid about what the kids can look forward to and, of course, Gareth Bale's move to the Bernabeu. I hope so much about, about Spanish soccer schools, you know. Uh, we've been working really hard about it in the last three months, uh, even, even longer because we've been thinking about it uh, since I arrived to Dubai. So I have to thank you know, the support I got from the, from the owners of Dubai Sports City. And what I hope, uh, you, know, I, I, you know, I said it in, in, in the press conference, you know. Um, first of all, I want to pay football back for everything it, you know, it gave to me. Uh, because I miss it a lot, especially miss playing. But now I have, you know, I got the chance to to bring everything back, um, to bring all the experience I got, to bring all the knowledge about football I got, and transfer it, you know, to the to the pitch and to the kids. Uh, and Dubai is special for me, of course. You know, um, it's like my second home uh, since 2002. The first the first time I came here, I felt really really comfortable in this in this country in this city the people uh, made me made me feel like that so it's a special it's a special country as well uh, something is happening here uh, they love football uh, they are doing so many things for the future to build up this this city and this country and i want to be part of the of that i want to be part of that uh, in terms of football, of course. Talking of the youth there, and it's something obviously very important to you and football. We have the FIFA 17 World Cup yeah, of coming up here in the UAE very soon. Of course, Spain are one of those teams that haven't qualified. But yeah, for strange. you, you'll be hoping to begin the process of, of getting the next generation, the younger kids, uh, back up to speed and, and hoping to be a success in the future. Yeah, you're right. You're right. Uh, I think the under 17 uh, World Cup in here in Dubai is a challenge for the, you know, not in Dubai, sorry, in Emirates, it's a challenge for the, for the whole country. And it's really good for us as well, for all the academies in here. Uh, it's, a, it's, you know, it's a shame that Spain is not, you know, are not there, and a big surprise as well. Uh, but uh, of course, uh, I'm going to try to um, to show the kids what they can do, you know, what they can achieve. Uh, what's you know, what's feel like uh, when you play a competition like that? They're going to see it. They're going to see it. They're going to watch it on live, and I think. That's, that's, that's really important. In terms of, of course, the Spanish soccer schools, we must remember it's not just Spanish kids that you want to no, attend. It's of uh, course. footballers from all over the world. No, so of course, it's not only for Spanish. Uh, even it's, it's, it's for you know, kids from every, you know, every, everywhere in the world. We so are you, have, you think you can get an English kid playing like a Spanish footballer? Why not? <laughs> why not? It's a question of, uh, you we know... haven't got that much skill. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you got, you got, you got some, you know... Uh, I can, you know, I can tell you because uh, I was there. I was in England playing three years, and I can, I can tell you that uh, English players, you know, they got a lot of, you know, a lot of quality in, in, in terms of football. There are amazing footballers in England, but the style is different. It's no more than that. Um, about the kids in here, uh, we've been working, and we are going to work with uh, kids from everywhere in the world. Uh, and when you get a kid and he's only four years old, five years old, it's not about the nationality, it's about the method, it's about the, uh, everything you teach to, you know, to him. So uh, in here what we want is uh, kids playing the, the Spanish style, it doesn't matter the nationality you know, or the ID. You talk about your time in England, of course, ex Real Madrid as well. We have to mention before we go, just one quick question. <laughs> yeah, Gareth sure. Bale, uh, yeah, a so huge is. amount of money oh my God. talked about. Is he worth it and will he be a success at the Bernabeu? It's very difficult to say, you know, if he's worth it or not. I always say, or footballers, we always say, if someone is paying that amount, you know, that amount for you, is, is you know, because you're worth it. Uh, the, the moment is difficult because, as you, you know, 
uh, the crisis in worldwide is, is big and it's not, it's not that easy to pay 100 million for a player. It's a crazy amount of money, of course. Uh, but, you know, I have to, I have to uh, talk about what I like and it's, you know, the football terms. And in football terms, I think it's a great signing for, you know, for Ramadi. He provides uh, more pace. Uh, but this pace, because, uh, you know, some plays are really quick. Uh, this guy is different. He's quick. And when, when he's on the run, he does things with quality and it's very difficult, you know. Uh, the speed this guy is amazing, but, uh, you know, on cruise, uh, on the run, he crosses fantastic, you know, he, he shoots fantastic, so he's got something special. You know, his last uh, two years, two, you know, two, se two seasons uh, have been amazing, outstanding in England. He deserves, you know, to play in a, in a big team. And Remedy have decided, you know, that he's the guy, he's the man. There is something, uh, you know, did to it, and it's uh, Barcelona have signed a, a player like Neymar, a big name. So this is another another fact, you know, another fact or another factor uh, for Real Madrid to sign uh, Gareth Bale. Lovely. Thank you very much for talking to me, Michelle. You're welcome. Well worth joining. See you at the World Cup soon, I hope. Uh, that's it for part two. When we come back, though, I'll be with Chris McCarty to talk sport over the last seven days. Gareth Bale, obviously high on the agenda. We'll discuss that next on Sport on 7. Yeah.